what I love about God. There's nothing new, he says, under the sun. And I believe that, you know, that when, when God does a thing, you know, he solidifies that thing. He, he improves on, he builds on. And if you desire more of God, then God will definitely desire more of you. And so I, I thank God this morning uh, for this day, this Independence Day. Most of you are uh, preparing to do your cooking, the ribs and the chicken and the, the shababs, kebabs, and all of these other things that we do on this day. The collard greens, the, the, the black eyed peas, the mashed potatoes, the string beans, the broccoli, the celery and all the gorgeous, uh, the gorgeous desserts that I've seen down through the years. But, uh, you know, this morning when I was sitting there thinking about God, I wasn't really thinking about uh, what I was going to eat today, you know, because long as they make food, uh, Brother Phil's going to eat. Amen. And so the thing is, I, I, I think most today, when I got up, I began to thank God. You know, I always do like Benny Hinn told me a long time ago. He said, you know, you, you say good morning, God, good morning, Jesus, and good morning, Holy Spirit. And as I began to just kind of dwell on the Trinity this morning, he, and, and they talked about independence. Well, you know, you can have your firecrackers today. I may go see some pop up in the air and you know it's for the children and sometimes it do us big children good to get out and share some things but I began to hear the Lord say this you know when you talk about independence one day I uh, God set me free uh, that's what independence is but but there's no independence like being set free from the sins of this world, from the things that hold you back, the things that rob and steal and kill the life out of you. You know, it, it, it's the, the, the ultimate independence day. The day I decided that I was tired of, of, of the, the drugs, I was tired of the alcohol, I was tired of, 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 of you know, doing all the other things that, that we will address at a later time. Uh, the Bible says some things, all things are lawful, but not expedient. But there's a lot of things, you know what I mean, you know what you do, you know what we do. And, 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 and those things were, 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 were keeping me in bondage. They were, they were, they were, they were, they were literally uh, sucking the life out of me, like Ross Perot said a long time ago. You know, he talked about making that sucking sound. And that's what, that's what sin does. It literally sucks the life right out of you. You know, uh, uh, you, you can see just from the elements as you do things, the effects that it have on the body. The Surgeon General has left us pretty beautiful uh, instructions of how these things that we do is, is going to torment our bodies. It's going to cause us to age quicker than what God has intended for us to age. It's causing us to do harm to our insides. And, and, and you, you know the story. You know the story. I'm sure we all have some battle marks. Amen. Some battle marks. Yeah, that's what they are. Just battle marks. Um, and, and so it, when, when you talk about independence to me today, be prepared to talk about the day God set me free. You know, be prepared for me to share with you how I, you know, was down in the dumps. I was at the bottom of life. I, I couldn't go any further. And, 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 and God reached down and, and called me. He called me by my name. You know, I was talking to a pastor the other day. God bless his soul. You know, he was telling me, we was talking, you know, about, you know, uh, 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 people being called to ministry and things like that. You know, I like to believe that the first thing God does is call you out your sin. A lot of times we think God called us to preach. No, he might have just called you to live right. Just, just start living right, doing what you know to do according to the word of God. And so when I talk about independence or when I'm thinking about independence today, I'm going to be thinking about the day that, you know, I was at the bottom of my road. You know, I remember my mother who used to stand here in this very kitchen. She used to tell me, she said, son, when you get to this crossroads in life, once you get to this place in life, she said, you know, you, 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 you're, you're going to have to make a decision. 
And she said, when you get there and you have no other way to turn, she told me to look up Lord Heaven's way and call on the name of Jesus. And I tell you, I remember it just like it was last night. You know, when God moved on my behalf, I, I was done. I was tired. I was just, I was sick of people. I was sick of the lies. I was sick of life altogether. And I decided that I needed to change. Well, I had tried everything else. There wasn't a drug out I hadn't tried. There wasn't a, a drink out I hadn't drank. There wasn't, you know, an experiences that I'd been through. So, 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 so I figured all those things didn't get me anywhere but trouble. Um, I'm going to try God and give him a chance. And I decree to you today that if you're in that place, and maybe you are, you know, then I, I highly recommend that you look up towards heaven's way. He's looking down at you even now. And, and just tell him, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm at a place that I don't like where I'm at. I don't like what I'm doing. God, I need to change. And this guy told me on the word cafe that if I just called on your name, that you would be quick and just to forgive me of all that I've done wrong and give me a new slate and I can start life all over again and I can make you happy. I can get in my word. I can begin to read about you starting at John chapter John, John, the gospel of John. Yeah, I can start right there, God, and, and begin to learn what you did for me, how you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. And, and now that I'm at this place that I can receive him, I can just believe that on the third day that he died, but on the third day he rose. And he rose with all power, they say, in his hand. Is that true, God? Do he have enough power, God, to change me? I mean, God, I'm a wretch undone. I've done things that I'm not proud of. God, you're trying to tell me that he can change me. Yes, he can. Yes, he surely can. And he will. Call on him. Repeat after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, not much of me left. Looks like I, I have no friends. I, I have no one, God, that I can depend on. I got no one that I can call my own. God, I'm lonely. I'm tired. Would you be my Lord and Savior? Would you come into my heart and place your love in me? God, would you come and let me lay my head in your bosom? And Lord, you can become my God. And I can become your child. Would you do that for me, God? I need you today. I don't need money. I don't need riches and fame. God, all I need is you. I need a peace of mind, God. I need God just for you to hold me. God, I don't feel like anyone cares. I don't feel like I'm worth much these days. But you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I'll serve you for the rest of my life. If you said that prayer, my friend, you're saved. You've been born again. Now believe and receive what Christ's done for you on the cross. If you want to follow up, I ask that you go to John chapter 8. I want to say uh, that very book I told you to start at, 36 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall. It didn't say you might. There's a possibility, slim chance, perhaps, maybe. No, he said you shall be saved. Guess what? Peace should have entered into you right there. Because guess what? It doesn't matter what our government do. It doesn't matter what the world do. You know that from this day forward, if Jesus was to come back, that I'll spend eternity with him in heaven where the streets are paved with gold. 
I will walk with him and the apostles and I will live forever in the presence of God. Uh, John chapter 8, 36 says, and you shall be free indeed. There's another scripture in the book of Galatians. If you go to Galatians, um, give me a minute. I still struggle with finding these spots. Okay, but uh, it is near and dear. Galatians, Galatians, Galatians. Okay, Galatians chapter 5. Beginning at verse 1. This is what the word says to you. Stand fast. That means the decision that you just made, it may not look like anything happened to you. See, that's where we most, we, most of us get thrown off at. Because you don't see a visual change. You looked in the mirror and it's still you. Huh? Well, guess what? This change doesn't take place on the outside. This change is taking place on the inside. And watch this. He says, stand fast, therefore. That means don't you get moved because you still might want a new point. Uh-oh. Don't, don't get moved. If you still got a taste for a butt, well, listen, listen, listen. That's all right. That's okay. Because this is a gradual change. Each and every day you get up, you say, Lord, today I make a decision, I make a conscious decision that I will fight today. That I will fight for my salvation. That's what he meant when he said, stand therefore. That means it may not look like I'm saved. Everybody that you hung out with on the corner, wherever you hung out with them at, you know, you, 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 they, they, they may not see what you feel. But eventually, I guarantee you, you'll begin to see the inside slowly. You'll begin to lose a desire. Hmm, I went all day without a new boy. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That means God is working his way. He's working his way through all that stuff. All that stuff you got in there. He's working his way. That's right. He's working his way. Where? To the innermost part of you. He is going to your soul. And there, once that conversion... It's a process daily. Don't ever let nobody tell you that, you know, because you 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 say the prayer of faith and that you believe. This is a faith walk. You must believe. And what I'm gonna tell you what God will do for you. I'm gonna tell you what He's gonna do. And I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna get an agreement right now that what God will do for you is He will make you can make little requests if you like. Uh oh. And watch this. God going to do it. God will do things, man. You say, well, Lord, uh, if it, uh, you know, I'm just throwing out something, but you you know, you know what I mean. Uh, if it, if, if it going to rain today, let it rain by 6 o'clock. And then man around here, and your head get wet at 6 o'clock. You, you begin to finish, say, you know what? You, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute now. This thing is real. Yeah, it is real. Now, I'm throwing, those are called felicious. Don't do that because that's like, you know, you're, you're, you're challenging God to do something. Uh, what This is not a challenging way. What it is, it's a faith way that you continue to believe. And there'll be little subtle things that God will show you him. It'll happen. It may be the sun shining in your face. I mean, it's all, it's all of a sudden, it's extremely bright. You know, God will throw little signs at you. Look for little signs as you go along your day. Look for little things to happen to you. I guarantee you, there'll be good things. And after a while, you'll begin to say, hmm, I wonder if that God. Yeah, that is God. All good things come from God. Anything negative have you thinking crazy, you know it comes from the devil, the father of all lies. That's what he is, a liar. So don't believe, don't get discouraged. But once you say that prayer, you slowly begin to work each and every day, each and every day, each and every day. And after a while, you find yourself a good church home, especially when they teach Bible study. Get in there, study on your own, but get in there and let the man and woman of God teach you a more excellent way. That's what Timothy, uh, happened to Timothy through his aunt and them. They, 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 
they taught him a more excellent way. He knew some scriptures, but he, he was more, it was that he was so excited about God until he had a form of godliness, or, or he was not a form of godliness, he, he, he had a, 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 a zeal, but not according to knowledge. That's what it was. And so by you going to church, going to school or, or Bible study, you will begin to learn of God. You'll learn little things that maybe you never understood before. You might can't even understand all these these and thous and thus. That's God. Say, Lord, I don't understand all of that. Could you show me how to, uh, how, how to understand this words and stuff? You know? And man, God will make that thing so personal to you. You'll be amazed, man. You'll get excited. You know, I always tell folk, you know, about being excited about God. You know, I tell folk, well, your children will get excited when you get excited. <laughs> how about that? Amen. Yeah. You know, and so so I want to continue with this here and I'm going to let you go. Stand fast, therefore, what? In the liberty. That's the freedom that God has given you the minute you pray that prayer. Listen to what it says. Wherewith Christ hath made us free. Huh? And watch this. He said, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What am I saying? I'm saying that when you give your life to Christ and you decide that you're going to live for God, then you can't keep going to the spots that you used to go to. I believe that the power of God will come on you today so strong that the desire to return to those places uh, won't have any effect on you. That you will literally begin to lose the desire. The cigarettes will go away. The bill will go away. The alcohol will go away. The whole mongering and all that, that stuff will go away. But you have to continue in faith. Continue to believe today that you are free and you cannot be entered back into bondage. And ask God to help you. Ask God to help you. The Bible says he's a ever present help. In a time of need. That means that when you call on God, He's always right there. But you got to believe. Tell someone about your newfound salvation. Tell them, hey, I'm saved, man. I know I don't look like it, but I am. And you continue to walk in that thing. Don't let nothing or nobody discourage you. You got salvation, honey, today. Today is your independence day. Just like my independence day. Today is your independence day. Again, this is Elder Fields uh, calling and talking to you loud and clear here on the Word Cafe. Tune in next time. God bless you. I love you. Be good.